They met in high school, David Murphy was a senior, and Diana Murphy was a freshman. While driving home from school, she fell in love with him. David proposed to Diana when she was 19 years old on the pier at Paradise Cove. Despite their parents' objections, David said that a life without risk is no life at all, so they married. David is an architecture graduate and spends his time designing their dream home, while Diana works as a real estate agent. While David is working, Diana expresses their unique declaration of love. One of David's bad habits is being messy around the house, which greatly annoys Diana. This leads to Diana scolding David and wanting to lash out at him. However, due to their love for each other, their argument ends in a steamy encounter. The couple puts everything they have into David's idea of buying oceanfront land in Santa Monica. They will have to borrow money to build David's house. They started building the house and tightened their belts for loan payments. But then the recession hit, the real estate market dried up, leaving Diana with no properties to sell and David losing his job. Without any income, David's childhood buddy Jeremy, their lawyer, stated that the bank had called in the demand note and could attach the house, which dismayed the couple. David borrowed money from the bank to purchase the land. He is now in severe need of $50,000 to prevent their land and current home from being repossessed. David swallowed his pride to borrow $5,000 from his father. One night, David couldn't sleep, so he woke up Diana because he had somewhere to go. They traveled to Las Vegas, hoping to win enough money to fund David's fantasy real estate project. Diana visited a dress shop, where she took some chocolates and slipped them into her bag. However, John Gage, the billionaire, noticed her stealing the chocolates. While Diana was trying on an extremely expensive cocktail gown, Gage offered to buy it for her, saying it suited her well and that he enjoyed watching her. Diana declined, stating that while the dress was for sale, she was not, which sat in Gage. Meanwhile, David had luck with his bets and won a significant amount of money. They tried their luck again, this time with David rolling the dice, and their winnings increased because of it. After David expressed their unique declaration of love, Diana noticed that Gage was watching them. David earned more than $25,000 playing craps, while Diana celebrated their winnings. Ecstatic with their success, Diana assured David that she loved him regardless of the money, and they shared another passionate moment together. Afterward, David gazed at his beautiful wife, feeling how deeply he loved her. The following day, with the hope of winning again to cover their $50,000 shortfall, they gambled once more. But unfortunately, they lost everything at roulette. They flipped a coin to decide whether to quit or keep going, but the coin decided to place another bet. Unfortunately, this time they lost once again, and all their money was gone. As they exited the casino, they discovered a crowd assembled to watch billionaire John Gage play Baccarat. Gage had previously lost $1 million playing Baccarat. He asked David to lend his wife for luck, and David agreed despite Diana's reluctance. When Diana stated that she disliked cards but enjoyed a game of dice, Gage withdrew another $1 million from the casino to transfer to the craps table. Gage invited Diana to accompany him for good luck, and she hit a winning craps roll on his $1 million bet. As a thank you, Gage insisted on paying for the Murphy stay, providing them with a luxurious hotel suite. Meanwhile, Mr. Shackelford, Gage's chauffeur, arrived with a gift for Diana, a dress he saw her admiring the night before that cost $5,000. Gage invited the couple to his suite for a gathering. Following a great evening together, the two played billiards, where Gage admitted that despite all his money, David had something he simply didn't have, a gorgeous wife. Diana insisted that some things aren't for sale and that you can't buy people. Gage wanted to test this cliché and offered the couple $1 million to allow him to spend the night with Diana, but Diana and David tell him to go to hell. Gage insists that night would come and go but money could last a lifetime a lifetime of security, for one night. Despite his persuasion, Diana and David's decision remains unchanged, they will not come to an agreement. That rough night, the two couldn't sleep. After some thought, Diana suggested that she would accept Gage's offer to get money for David. Diana hoped the money would provide them with a secure future. Despite David's reluctance, Diana explained that it would only affect her body, not her mind and soul. After this, the couple decided to forget about the proposal. The next day, David contacted his lawyer, Jeremy, regarding the big deal. Jeremy prepared a contract for the arrangement, and the contract was signed by both parties at that moment, indicating that David and Diana accepted the offer. The contract was drawn up by David's childhood buddy Jeremy, who was also their lawyer. Gage had to deposit $1 million into David's casino account the next morning. After the deal was done, David left Diana with Gage. 
David was restless, tormented by thoughts of what Gage might do to Diana. As Jeremy tried to comfort him, David had a change of heart and ran to the suite to cancel the deal, only to find that both his wife and Gage were gone. He rushed to the rooftop, but it was too late, he arrived just as they were leaving by helicopter. Gage flew Diana to a luxury yacht, where he told her that he chose her because she had said she couldn't be bought. But Diana insisted that it was only her body, not her mind and soul. Gage offered her the opportunity to cancel the agreement and return to her husband if he lost a throw of his lucky coin. Gage called it right, and she stayed the night with him. The next day, Diana returned to the suite, and this time, it was David who tried to comfort and be affectionate towards her. Afterward, the couple discovered that they had missed a payment on their loan, leading to their house being contracted to another party. This news infuriated David. Although he had intended to move past the incident, David became increasingly concerned about his connection with Diana, fearing that she would continue to be associated with Gage. Diana wanted to make something good out of all they had done wrong, so she decided to try and buy their property back. Her uneasiness grew when she realized that Gage had purchased their house while it was in foreclosure. During a meeting with his associate, Diana confronted Gage, who refused to return the property and demanded that Diana work for him. Diana returned home feeling utterly drained and immediately needed a glass of wine. She started to share the details of her attempt to get their house back. However, when she mentioned that she had seen Gage, David became furious, igniting yet another argument between them. Diana explained that Gage had purchased the property, which was why she needed to meet with him. This revelation made David jealous, further escalating the tension between them. David felt Diana had been drawn to Gage from the start and had slept with him for selfish reasons. Diana maintained that she had slept with Gage only to save their relationship. The strain on their relationship led David and Diana to split up. While David was at Jeremy's house, Diana called and eventually told him to keep the entire amount of money. David refused, not wanting to accept it either, so Jeremy stepped in and offered to take the money if no one else wanted it. Diana immersed herself in her work as a real estate agent, keeping busy to cope with everything that was happening. Gage remained persistent and renewed his advances on Diana. He employed Diana's real estate business to show him residences worth $10 million. Despite her reluctance, Diana had to accommodate Gage because it was a direct order from her manager. Gage did this so he could spend more time with her. He pointed out a house worth $30 million, and that's when Diana realized it was Gage's own home. Diana suggested that the house needed some life, like furniture, a couple of dogs, and some flowers. But Gage insisted that it needed her. Diana disagreed, citing that he was just collecting things. Meanwhile, David was left alone in the house, with no one around to be annoyed by his mess anymore. Diana had free time and decided to take up a second job giving citizenship training to immigrants to keep herself busy, where David still visited her. She was invited to his house, where he now had pet dogs, which she liked. Despite her initial resistance, Diana finally agreed to spend time with him, and a friendship developed. On the other hand, in his loneliness, David revisited the happy memories of being with Diana. Due to his hopelessness about ever reconciling with his beloved, he tore up the pictures of Diana to completely forget her. One night outside the casino, a drunk David rushed in and confronted Gage and Diana, who were now a couple. He told Gage that they were invincible. Due to his insults toward Diana, she refused to speak to him. This led him to attempt to harm Gage, but he failed. Because of his drunken state, Mr. Shackelford took him home, where he saw the torn pictures of Diana that David had attempted to repair. The next day, David saw the model of their house. Because of this, he decided to pull his life back together and found a teaching position. After his lecture, Jeremy approached him to hand over the divorce papers, and Diana filed for divorce. At a charity event, Diana liked a painting, so Gage placed the highest bid of $40,000. However, David outbid him by offering $1 million more, which shocked everyone. David realized that he could not live without the love of his life. David bared his soul, explaining why he allowed Gage's proposal to happen, he thought they were invincible. He believed Gage was a better man, but he was not, he just had more money. David signed the paperwork and said goodbye, leaving Diana feeling sad while Gage observed their interaction. On their way home, Gage lies to Diana, claiming that she is merely the latest member of his million-dollar club of women. Seeing through his deception, she gratefully ends their relationship. Diana realizes that Gage is doing this to make it easier for her to leave, so she thanks him. Before parting ways, he gives her his lucky coin for good luck. After she leaves, Gage explains that she would never have looked at him the way she did at David. Gage notices Diana's reaction to David and understands that even if she stayed with him, 
Their relationship would never be as intense as it was with David. On the bus, Diana looks at the lucky coin and realizes that it is double-headed. Diana returns to the pier where David proposed to her seven years earlier to remember and start over. On her way, she finds David there. Repeating their unique declaration of love, they join hands, and both sense each other's happiness in the reoccurrence of their love. For more videos similar to this, don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications. Thank you for watching.